It's time for Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Join us as we study the uncompromised Word of God and how it can be applied to our everyday lives. We were talking about being fighters. That's what we started with this morning, and we kind of laid the groundwork, uh, really some basics of, of what we're fighting, why we're fighting. If you missed that this morning, you can download it for free off of the internet or grab a CD from the back and, and get caught up with us. Uh, we are fighters. And, and I love the, the study that where we talked about the Greek word for the church. <laughs> that this is a place that we come to train. This is a place where we come to condition our minds and our bodies for the fight, anything that we might contend with. And I told you tonight we want to we start talking about the mindset of a fighter, the kind of mind and thinking that a fighter must have. I asked you this morning about personality type. Briefly, we touched on it because I didn't really want to concentrate there this morning. But, but I'm going to ask it again because I'm going to go further with it. If you have the personality type, what would be considered a strong, domineering personality type, um, it's not necessarily that you go out looking for confrontation, but if it comes, you don't mind it. And uh, you've got a little bit of fighting, you're a little scrappy. If that's you, raise your hand. Oh, please raise your hand. You are my hero. Get your hand up. Both hands. Okay, me too. Now, if you have a personality type that's really non-confrontational, and you're more likely to give in to keep peace rather than to put up a fight, <laughs> Lynn's like, that ain't me, that ain't me. If you're the non-confrontational, easygoing, laid back, raise your hand. Okay. I, I think neither one's wrong. Neither one is wrong. Both have pluses in different areas. But when you're a, a, a scrapper <laughs> and you're a little bit of a fighter, you're, you're more apt to stand up to what the enemy throws at you. And to, to, to walk the, the faith walk and to fight the faith fight, we need to take on a fighter's personality, no matter what our natural personality is. So you scrappers have a little bit of an advantage in this area. There's some areas you have disadvantages in, relationships for instance. But in this area, the fight of faith, you have, a little bit of, you have a little bit of an advantage because you're a scrapper. You're a fighter. From, from your own natural personality, you're, you're, you've got that part already going for you. If you're not, then that's what we're here for. We're going to become fighters. We're going to pick up that mindset. It's important, I think it's important for you to know and to understand where you are and from what mindset you're coming from so you know what you need to change. And let's reread part of Matthew, what Matthew Henry said. I remember I read a long part of it this morning. We're not going to read that long part of it because it was long. We're going to pick out this part that applies to tonight. Matthew Henry said this about Matthew 11 that we read this morning that talked about the violent taking it by force. This was the phrase that really stood out to me. Self must be denied. The bent and bias, the frame and temper of the mind must be altered. If, if you are naturally uh, laid back, non-confrontational, and you just want to do what keeps peace and what is easy, be prepared to be altered. Because you're becoming a fighter. In faith, you're becoming a fighter. You can keep that personality great in other areas. Keep it, please. It'll save you a lot of trouble. All of us strong-headed people can say amen. But self must be denied. And the temper and the frame and the bent and the bias of the mind must be altered. It must be altered. The Word can do that for us. Just as the Word can temper my natural inclination to be confrontational and a little wordy sometimes with a sarcastic tone, the Word, did I hear an amen from the front row? <laughs> the Word can temper that in me. 
And just as it can temper that in me and needs to and has to, it can temper your laid-backness, your non-confrontational attitude. It can temper that, and you can become a fighter in faith. You can become a... Yes, you. You can become a fighter. It says there are hard sufferings to be undergone. This is still Matthew Henry. A force to be put upon the corrupt nature. We have to run, wrestle, and fight, and all little enough to win such a prize and to get over such opposition from without and from within, the violent take it by force. You are a fighter because the Word says you are to fight the good fight of faith. And just as you take the Word and you speak health to your body and you say, I'm healed because Jesus said... By his stripes I am healed. You take the word and you say, I am a fighter because he told me to fight the good fight of faith. He wouldn't ask me to fight if he had not put in me the ability to become a fighter. Right. You're a fighter. You're a warrior. You're a fighter. We talked about this morning. The word calls you a good soldier. It calls you a fighter. It compares you to a boxer. It compares you to a runner. It compares you to a wrestler. It compares you to the athlete that is trained and that is determined. That's how the scripture pictures you. We've got to get to the place where we picture ourselves in that same light. As 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, that talks about the good fight of faith. And we spent some time this morning establishing that we're not fighting the devil. That Jesus has already defeated him. The devil is a loser. That is established. That is not where our fight is. That was Jesus' fight. He won. We stand in his victory. Our fight is to remain standing in the victory that Jesus won. When our military goes and they take a territory, and they take control, and they win that territory then they have a job to do. After they've taken the territory, they have a job to do. Because it's not over. Even though it's won. It's not over. Why? Because the enemy always wants to come back and reclaim that territory. The military's job then is to say, no, you're not coming back in here. This territory has been won. Our flag's flying. You're not coming back in. It's the same thing for the Christian. Jesus has won the territory of your health. He has won the territory of your family. He has won the territory of your finances. His flag's flying. He's won the victory. Your job, militants, is to stand ground and reinforce and enforce the victory that he has already won. That is your fight of faith. Whether that fight takes place in your own mind, and a lot of times it is simply fighting our thoughts. The mindset is so important. We're not going to let the thief steal what God has promised and Jesus provided. We're fighters. We're not going to let the thief steal what God promised and Jesus provided. We're not going to let the thief steal our health that God promised and Jesus provided. We're not going to let the thief steal our home life and our peace life that God promised and Jesus provided. We're not going to let the thief steal the finances that God promised. We're working the laws. We're doing what God said. We're following his instructions. We're not going to let the thief steal what God promised and Jesus provided. We're fighters. We're fighters. We can't, we talked this morning about People that just go with the flow of what the world hands them instead of paddling upstream. If you don't want what's downstream, this was our statement of the day, paddle, sister. If you don't want what's downstream, if you don't want the, what, what, the way the world's going, then we've got to oppose it. We've got to oppose it. We've got to stand and we've got to fight. Victory mindset is so important. Whether it's the military standing in a territory or whether it's us standing in our faith, that victory mindset, knowing that possession has already been taken, past tense, the victory has already been won, past tense, that's where our strength is to stand. I'm not going to go fight in a territory 
And, and there's been some wars done this way, and you know it, where we don't know if we have victory there or not. We fight where we know there's victory that's already been won. We don't mind standing. A fighter wins mentally before he ever enters the ring physically. Now, I grew up during an interesting boxing era. And I'm looking for my classmates. Hi, Janine, okay? We kids of the 70s and 80s and Muhammad Ali. Sugar Ray Leonard. Sorry, you younger ones, if you don't know who those people are. These were great fighters. These were great. Two different personality types. Sugar Ray was sweet until he got in the ring. Muhammad Ali was half-cocked at any given time, ready to go off. That's the personality types of this congregation. Both were champions because when they got in the ring no matter what personality type they came from from before naturally they became a fighter when they stepped in their mentality changed so whichever one you are you can still win you can still stand we have to go back to Ephesians 6 we danced all around it this morning and we're probably going to use it for the next couple of services that I teach in it is the picture of God's fighter. It is the picture of God's warrior. This is the way he sees the person who is standing in faith. Therefore, it's got to be how I see myself. So it's an important scripture for us. And we're going to take our time going through this. I tried to leave you a little space between scriptures so you could... Maybe have a little more room to write things if something hits you <coughs> for your notes. We, and we've gone, and this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend a week on this, and it could, it could have a week spin on it, okay? So this is a seed of what you need. You're going to take it home and become studiers of the word. And I know a lot of you are, and I appreciate it. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, a lot's been said about people who are strong and when they think we're strong and when they don't think we're strong. But this is key. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I like to exchange a word there, and I think it's legal to do so. You can judge it. Be strong in the word and in the power of its might. You're only as strong as the word you have working in you. And I can't tell you how many times I've said that to people when they say, oh, you're so strong, you're so strong. Sometimes I just, let me tell you what's strong. <laughs> what's strong is the word, the foundation that we have chosen to put the time in to plant our feet on. That's why we stand. You're only as strong as the word you have working in you. How strong are you? you how strong are you and, and we may be strong in some areas and weaker in others some of you have health established the enemy cannot steal it from you you're like a bulldog you've got it established you're strong in that but where finances are concerned you've got a you've got a deficit so this the word judges us the word, the scripture says it is a mirror. We can look into it and we can see what needs to be fixed. We can see where we're supposed to be and we can see where we are and we can make the adjustments necessary and that's important for us to do. So you're only as strong as the word that you have working in you. Confidence was the number one thing I found as, as I've been reading this week about what makes a good fighter. Confidence. It doesn't have to be cocky like Muhammad, Ali, let me put the last name on there. It doesn't have to be just attitude, it's got to be something that backs the confidence. 
And that's where the word comes in. The word is what backs, you're, you're not just super Christian out here trying to show off. Your confidence is backed with the goods. It's backed with the goods. And it was the number one thing that everybody said that I read about what makes a good fighter. Confidence was a big part of it. So if you're only as strong as the word you have working in you, how confident are you? How confident are you? When, when you enter a fight, something comes against you trying to take from your territory, how confident are you? You're only going to be as confident as the goods that you have to back up that confidence. And that's your faith. Where's your faith at? How's your faith developed? If you're not, don't fight too soon. Don't step in the ring too soon. Build yourself up. Where are you mentally? That's a huge question. It's something we ask people when we're dealing with them in the hospital. When we're dealing with them and they're in a, a fight with their marriage. It, not a fight in their marriage, a fight for their marriage. which They kind of go together. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you mentally? That's something we need to ask ourselves. Where am I mentally? Verse 11, that, that, was, that was a lot to get out of be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. The whole armor of who? This is God's armor. This is God-provided armor. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Every piece of this armor that he is about to list is in direct correlation to your ability to stand. That's all tied in there together. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? So that you can stand against the trickery or the wiles or the tricks of the enemy. The less equipment that I have, the shorter my stand. If, if I'm missing a piece of this armor, if I do not have this, this established in me, it, it's going to affect how I stand against the enemy. It's going to affect how I stand against the enemy. These pieces that he talks about here are so important. He's provided it, but he tells us to put it on. Oh, to God, if he just put it on me, you know, if he just put it on me. But he says, you put on, put on the whole armor of God. How? I mean, it's not a physical thing. I don't have armor in my closet that I go, which would be kind of nice too, wouldn't have to decide what to wear every day. I don't go and physically put this on. No, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This isn't a physical thing. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we talked about that this morning. What we're coming against is not people. Your, your problem in your marriage, you're not going to come against your mate. Your problem with your kids, you're not coming against a, a flesh issue. There's, there's a spiritual tie to every fleshly thing. The spirit world is the real world. We see it right the opposite. But the spirit world is the real world. And that's what we, this is the armor that we put on for the things that are going on there. This armor is what he asks us to know. That's how we put it on. It's what he asks us to have established in our lives. This armor is how he asks us to picture ourselves as the fighter. This is to be our mentality. This is to be our mindset. And it is the mindset that it takes to have victory and to not back down. This is what I have to have established in my life in order to have complete victory. If I'm short in some of it, if I'm missing some of it, if I forget to act in some of it, then it's going to have an effect on the victory I have in my life. It's going to. So it's important that we have these truths established in our lives. Verse 13. I told you this wasn't going to be thorough, thorough on these. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. You take it unto you. Take the whole, the whole, the whole, the whole armor of God. Sometimes we get, hit, we get hung up on the shield of faith. Shield of faith. Whole armor. And if you're not getting the, enough teaching here on righteousness then by all means, dig it out. Don't depend on the pulpit and the church to put your armor on you. If you need teaching in another area, find it. My goodness, I can go on the internet and I can find teaching on any piece of this. And get it. Get what you need. Don't be short in it. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And that word means oppose. Don't just take what's coming at you, but withstand against it in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. And you hear us say that a lot around here. To stand, to stand, to stand, to stand therefore. And, and we'll go into... Well, let's just go into it now. Where are we standing? We're standing in the victory. We're standing firm. We're standing in our position. We're standing in the territory that has already been taken by Jesus Christ. That is where we stand. And having done all, Jesus has done everything necessary to make everything in the Word available to you. It's done. It's provided. It's there. Stand there for. Stand there for. Don't let the enemy have your kids. Don't let the enemy have your marriage. Don't let the enemy have your finances. Don't let the enemy have your peace. Don't let the enemy have your blood sugar. Don't let him have it. Stand there for. Stand because of this. Stand there for. And this is how you stand. Having your loins gird about with the truth. Having your loins gird about with truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. And what the scripture says, have your loins gird about with truth. What is truth? Thy word is truth. The scripture says to gird up the loins of your mind. Gird them up. Strengthen them. Don't let the, your thoughts go wherever your thoughts want to go. Don't let your thoughts go where the media is trying to take your thoughts and lead your thoughts, where the billboards are trying to take your thoughts, where the commercials are trying to take your thoughts. Have you ever in your life seen so many prescription pill commercials? It's not like you could just go out and buy the stuff anyway. Why are they advertising to us? Advertise to the doctors. They're the only ones that can prescribe it. I mean, really? They're just conditioning you. They're conditioning you to accept what they're saying. And then when you hear it from the doctor, you go, oh, yeah, a Lyrica. I mean, some of you could sit here and probably list about 10 medications that you never would have known out about before in your life simply because you've seen commercials on it, and now it becomes acceptable. No. No, because you're withstanding you're withstanding, you're standing, therefore, having your, alert, your loins gird about with truth. And you know what the truth is because you know what the Word says. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Man, you've got to know who you are in Christ Jesus. You've got to realize that this victory, no, you didn't deserve it, but it's yours anyway. It's yours anyway because Jesus Christ gave it to you. He gave it to you. And if you don't have on the breastplate of righteousness, then everything's going to hit your heart. Everything's going to hit your heart. You're not worthy. You're not good enough. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. And nobody is perfect enough to deserve what God's given except for Jesus. But the good news is you're in Christ. So you've got to have on that breastplate of righteousness or you will not be able to stand in this victory. You will not stand. Something will come at you and it will hit you there. 
It'll hit you in your conscience. From your past, from your present, whatever, it'll hit you there. You've got to have this piece of armor that says you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That's who you are. That's how you stand. That's what you stand in. I don't know how to say it any, any other way. This is what you stand in. And it will protect you from some of the things that the enemy will throw at you that would keep you from standing in the victory that God has provided. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I got this from one of the fighting magazines online. Confidence in a fight comes from knowing that you've done everything you can to prepare for it. It's hard to be confident on fight day if you haven't put your work in during training. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Preparation of the gospel of peace. Your confidence to stand comes from the preparation that you have taken from the gospel. And that, that peace and that confidence that it gives you, even when a fight is facing you, you stand, and, and some, I think, Tucker, it may have been you, somebody was talking to me a long time ago about the armor. And you know, that you, you can read all kinds of things about the armor. But I, but I do like this point, that sometimes they would even have spikes on the bottom that they would kind of like what we would wear on ice, except bigger, they would stick their feet in the ground so that they could not be moved. That's what the Word will do for you, the preparation of the gospel of peace. We don't run from a fight. We don't hide from a fight. Our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and we stand in that peace. We stand in that peace because we've prepared for this moment. You're preparing for whatever you may face. And it may be something that you could have never imagined. Yet you will find yourself standing in a peace that passes all understanding because the gospel has prepared you for it. Right. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And you know, we talked about the thief this morning, and I, and I should have mentioned this scripture then, because I didn't end it on a good note on this part. We talked about the thief not playing legal. And a, a thief coming in even when the doors are locked. And that's true. A thief doesn't play by the rules. But we still have this word right here that says... We can come to a place that we can have our shield of faith so built. And the shield of faith is what you have out in front of you. It's what's out there that stops things from ever getting to you. That's why we make faith such a big deal. Because it's out there in front of you and sometimes behind them for, for sneak attacks. <laughs> it's what stops what you, can, you haven't even seen yet. You've put that shield of faith. Yes, you get up. We talked this morning about reading your confessions, quoting the word over yourself. You know what you're doing? You're building your shield of faith. And you're putting it up so that it prevents things from ever even getting to you. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all. All. All the fiery darts of the wicked. This was the piece of armor that they put out in front. It caught the darts before the arrows could ever get to them. And, and my question for this piece is, what do you have already out in front of you? What do you have already out in front of you? Man, if you've got 1 Peter 2.24 down pat, you have confidence in it. I mean, you don't, that's, not, that's the furthest thing from your mind is sickness and disease. You've got that part of your shield out there. Where are you weak? Where are you weak? Because the, the wonderful thing about this shield is we add to it. 
We are constantly, we come in here, we hear the word, and we're placing another piece. We're adding to our shield. And that's how we get to the point of all the fiery darts of the wicked being stopped. That's why it's so important to continue to increase in your faith. It's because it's what is out in front of you and it's able to quench everything that the devil throws at you. Verse 17, and we take the helmet of salvation. We take the helmet of salvation. This is what protects my mind. I have to cover my thoughts with my salvation. I have to cover my head with my salvation. This is what keeps me thinking right. We must, we must, we must, if we're going to walk in this victory, we must keep our mind dominated by the word. Dominated by the word. To the degree we let other things in, we'll weaken to that degree. I can't afford weakness. I don't need weakness. I need strength. So my mind must be dominated by the word. And, and we're going to talk some probably next week about commitment and focus of a fighter. Distractions and fighting are enemies. They're enemies. We cannot be distracted. Our minds must be dominated by our salvation. We are covenant-minded. We're salvation-minded. No, I'm not having that. It's covered under my covenant. No, I'm not having that. This was provided for me by God, by Jesus Christ, through salvation. This was provided for me. We've got to be thus-minded, as the scripture would say. We've got to think this way. The helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. <coughs> I love what God gave me on this. We'll get to it in a minute. I get excited just reading that now. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And, and I love what Dad says about this whole um, line up here, which is the Word of God really applies to every piece. It does, because it all comes from the Word of God. But the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, this is the offensive weapon listed. It's the offensive weapon that is listed. I don't want to only play defense. I don't want to only play defense. You got to play offense too. I'll try not to get off on the hog game. <laughs> Our offensive weapon is the word of God. And over and over and over again, it is compared to a sword. And I put a couple of references that I think are excellent in your notes. Revelation 19, 15, speaking of Jesus upon his return, says, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. Revelation 19, 21, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. This word of God, it is a two-edged sword. It is the sword of the Spirit. The word of God is our sword, and the sword is a crucial part to our victory. It is the only offensive weapon that we need. Just give me the word. It's all I need. It's all I need in my offense. This is what God said to me that I just, man, I just want to put it on a poster. This is the part that ends the fight. The sword. This is the part that ends the fight. It's not over until the sword is used. It's not over till the sword is used. It's not over till the sword is used. It's not over until the sword is used. Sammy, it's not over till the sword's used. It's not over until you draw that sword out of your mouth. That's how you kill it. That's how you kill it. Diabetes, that's how we kill you. Confusion, mental distraction, that's how we kill you. 
strife, that's how we kill you. All the rest are great, but there's something about the sword of the Spirit. It's not over until the sword is used, which takes us right into verse 18. Praying always. That's using your sword. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. When we pray, we are to use the sword of the Spirit. We're to say what the Word says. And this is where we really separate the men from the boys. Faith people, this is one thing that you, you, you're learning is that when you pray, it's not about talking your problem. It's about speaking the Word of God to your situation. This soldier is alert. It says he is watching, he is aware, he is focused. This picture of this warrior that we just had painted to us by inspiration of the Holy Spirit is you. This is what you're supposed to look like. And if this is what you look like when you pray, you might pray a little different than you have been. This is what we're to look like when we pray. This is the fighter, the warrior, the winner. You can't, you can't paint this picture of this guy with this armor on. You cannot see this guy losing. When you picture this guy, those spikes planted in the ground, his shield out front, his breastplate of righteousness, his helmet of salvation, his sword of the Spirit, all the pieces of his armor on, you can't see that guy losing. When you look at that guy, you see a winner. You see him more than a conqueror. So now all you have to do is see you as this guy. Because if you can see you as this guy, you can't see you losing. What you will see is a more than a conqueror, a warrior, a fighter, a winner, someone who's already taken the victory. This is your mental training for the week. I would like for you to take Ephesians chapter 6 and take verses 10 through 18 and write you in it. Write you in it. I put mine in your notes. This was just a quick, in fact, when I read back over my notes and I was going over what I had written, I was already adding more stuff to it. I mean, I, when I read it, I'll probably add what I thought of in the office. This is what I would like for you to do, even as a family. If you've got uh, young scholars here or here taking notes tonight, then take some time with them as a family. Read this verse and see what they see. Ask them, them what they see. How does this apply to them? How can they do this? This is what I wrote. I am strong in the word that I have placed in my heart. All of your power and strength are in that word. Therefore, your power and strength are in me. I have put it on as my armor. It has been tested and it has been proven to withstand hell itself. It makes me who I am. I am a fighter. Who I was before doesn't matter when I put this armor on, for this armor is God's. With it I am able to withstand the evil day. As Jesus stood in his place of victory, so I stand in his victory. I stand, I stand, I stand. I do not run, I do not back down, I stand. I am held together and my core is strengthened by his truth. My heart is protected by my knowledge of my righteousness in Christ, and my feet are prepared by the word to stand in peace no matter what comes my way. I have placed the shield of faith in front of me, and daily I am increasing the size of that shield so that it stops all the fiery darts of the enemy. Now I draw out the sword of the Spirit, the word of God that I have placed in my heart that now comes out of my mouth, and it ends this controversy. The outcome is settled by the sword. The end has been declared. This is where I stand. I am this warrior built by the word of God. Now, you take it. Use some of mine if you want to. Use your wording because here's the deal. The armor's got to fit you. The armor's got to fit you and it, and it will. 
But if we don't see ourselves as this person, this isn't just pieces of the armor we study, this is us. This is you. You are the fighter that he's building here in, in this painting. It is you that he's painting, but we've got to see ourselves in it. I am ready, I am so ready to see us overcome everything that is thrown at us. Not just surviving. Not just surviving. Not just making it through. But more than conquerors. We gave you that scripture this morning. More than conquerors. To me, that, me, that more than means something. We hadn't just survived what the anim, enemy threw. Man, I want to get to the place where we've got the shield of faith built. To where we're just standing back here. Can't touch this. I won't sing. Can't touch this. Why? Because we've put the time in. We've put the time in. And one thing that we're going to talk a lot all the way through this, this fighter series you don't become a fighter, a winner, without effort and without training and without diligence and without perseverance. It's, it's crucial, it's key that we put the time in. And I am so thankful that we've got a church where we still have a Sunday night and Wednesday night service. Because we've got people that still want to come and learn and hear the word. You are the winners. <laughs> you are the winners because you are the fighters. You are the fighters. And because you fight, you win. It, you're not going to win without it. And we're going to build that mentality in ourselves to where we don't accept what the enemy throws at us. We're only going to take what the word says. That's what we're going to fight for. Amen? Y'all can stand. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. If you would like more teaching, you can visit our website at www.rccenter.org or download our app to your device. The Russellville Christian Center is located at 305 Lakefront Drive. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program or if you would like more information, please call 479-968-7965.